Um, okay, so uh, let's go on with Shimura varieties. So maybe I, I start with a, a big diagram of Shimura varieties. Um, so yesterday I defined a Shimura datum, which gives us uh, this Shimura variety. So a Shimura datum was like cute, okay. Like a pair. of a group and some morphism each of uh, algebraic groups of R with a bunch of conditions uh, that will ensure in particular that this, these double cosets are algebraic varieties over C. Uh, okay. Where this is the GR conjugacy class of H. Okay, and then there was that notion of a canonical model, uh, which is uh, defined over what we call the reflex field, E of the data. <coughs> so this is a finite extension of Q, and it's uh, also embedded in C. Okay, and I finished with the... Ah. So I finish with the theorem that every Shimura variety actually has a canonical model. Uh, right, so um, yeah, to come back to this. Uh, so I said the, the groups that you can have uh, are restricted. So if you look at the list of possible types, I mean, you have A, B, C, D, E6, E6, E7, uh, however, uh, you cannot have any group of type A. So for example, type A, uh, all the groups have to be unitary. Uh, there's also some restrictions. Uh, so in type C, you can have the split uh, form of the group. Uh, but in types B and D, there are restrictions that I don't understand because orthogonal groups are scary. But uh, well, there are also, I mean, you can find tables of the possible, <coughs> the possible groups somewhere, like in Mill. Um, OK. And then at the other end, you have the Ziegel modular variety. So this is when G is GSP 2D. Uh, so they have canonical model. And not only do they have canonical model, but canonical model has a modular interpretation. So modular space of principally polarized abelian varieties of a certain dim of dimension d with level structure. Uh, here, let me add a line, integral model. So I want to start today by talking about integral models a little bit. And here, actually, the moduli problem is defined uh, over so in principal level n is defined over z1 over n. Uh, so you get an integral model for free. Well, for, for Mumf the price of Mumford's theorem. Uh, OK. Uh, and so in the middle, you have a whole uh, hierarchy, which I think I said that in the notes, um, I do not mean that in every respect, we are going from most complicated to simplest Shimura variety, because in some respects, these ones are complicated too. For example, they are not compact. And the group here has endoscopy. Uh, but from the point of view of uh, the description of, uh, of the points of the Shimura variety, I guess it's probably fair to say that this is the most complicated one. This is the simplest case. Uh, so I will. So we have what we call Hodge type here in the middle. Here we have a billion type. PL type and here Ziegel modular variety. Uh, so I'm going to give you a definition at least of Hodge type. But first, let me tell you about the properties. So I mean, obviously, they all have canonical models. Uh, So the question is, uh, you know, 
how explicit maybe is the canonical model. So, the, uh, so this one's you can write the canonical model as a model space of abelian varieties with some kind of Hodge tensors. So it's it's explicit. Uh, it's explicit, but it's somehow not explicit. Oh, actually. Sorry, because my knowledge was updated yesterday. So yesterday I would have said it's not explicit enough to define the integral model. Is it now? Okay, then, good. Uh, a PL type is uh, so PL means uh, oh yeah, they're all principally. I mean, they're all polarized in some way. Uh, I don't remember who said that the correct generalization of an elliptic curve is not an abelian variety, it's a polarized abelian variety, but I mean, this certainly is very true here. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so those are abelian variety with uh, the structure, the action of uh, on the end of well, on the abelian variety of some uh, uh, <clears throat> semi-simple Q algebra. So, uh, yeah, so PL means uh, polarization and domorphisms, level structure. Obviously, everything has a level structure here. Uh, and these ones also have a moduli description, at least for the canonical model, uh, but it's just a moduli space of, well, of some uh, nice motifs. Um, and, uh, well, conjecturally, actually, all Shimoa varieties should be modelized spaces of motifs, but we just don't know how to prove it uh, for the general Shimoa varieties. Um, <clears throat> right, what do I want to say? So, yeah, so be careful, abelian type does not mean modelized space of abelian varieties. <laughs> it's Hodge type, that is a modelized space of abelian varieties. Um, so, what are the groups? Uh, so, here you can have. So the groups that can appear are all classified. So all the all the Shimura data where G is of types A, B, C, uh, they are abelian type. So that's what's classified by Dublin. Uh, type D, it's like uh, okay, it's a bit complicated. So there is something like uh, if the if it's mixed type D, then it's not abelian type. Uh, but I'm not going to get into the type D, the details of the type D classification and. Exceptional Shimura varieties are not abelian type. Uh, here is like, well, it's the same types, uh, but uh, <clears throat> well, there are some technical conditions. Um, you know, there are always problems with the center, with Hodge type and PL type Shimura varieties. So. So same types as here, but with some uh, extra technical conditions. And here you have types A, C, and D, but again with conditions on the center of the group that are quite uh, stringent. Uh, okay, uh, so let's see that I don't want to forget. Oh, right, integral models. So I'll, I'll talk a bit more about what integral models should be uh, later, but. Let's, uh, let me just mention that we do know how to construct integral models uh, up to a billion type Shimura varieties. Okay, so uh, maybe I should, right. So let me define uh, what is a Hodge type Shimura datum so that like, we, we know what we're talking about a little bit. So Hodge type Shimura datum is a, well, G H uh, that well okay. So my sentence is not great, but so it's just a Shimura datum that has an injection into the um, the Ziegel Shimura Shimura datum. Oh yes, in such that there exists D and there exists an injection.
Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, abelian type, uh, okay, so abelian type is basically Hodge type up to center. So abelian type means like you have your here, and uh, here, and this has to be like uh, isomorphism on uh, like the G add. And, and I mean, once you have something like that, you can deduce the Shimura datum for the adjoint group. So, uh, okay. So basically, abelian type Shimura varieties are going to have over C connected components that are quotients of connected components of Hodge type Shimura varieties by finite groups, and then you, you kind of use that to reduce from abelian type to Hodge type, which is not as easy as I trying to make it sound, but can be done. Uh, and PL type, well, PL type, okay, so if I I mean, it's, a, it's introduced in the notes with all like the sextuples of data and all that. Uh, so maybe, uh, what can I say about, so PL type is like, uh, you don't just give an injection like that, but you, you give, you give a, a, the G is going to be the group of symmetries of like a certain, uh, a certain alternating form on a certain algebra. So I'm, I'm going to give you an example of PL type. Uh, that uh, is uh, the example we're going to care about later. So here, uh, so I have Q, I take a totally real extension and of F0 and I take a CM extension of, uh, so that means that this is degree two totally imaginary. Okay, and then let's take a central simple algebra B over F. Okay, and on B, let's take star, a uh, positive involution. Uh, so that means that to trace um, BR to R of uh, X star X is positive for every non-zero X um, <clears throat> and uh, extending uh, okay, so here I have uh, Z goes to Z bar. That's the non-trivial element of, uh, of the Galois group of F over F0. So I want this to extend Z goes to Z bar. Okay. And uh, I think, uh, is that, yeah, that's all I'm going to use. Uh, I can't hear you. Do you require that you actually have a map for G to G prime in Julian type? I thought you only asked for a map on your X. Oh, uh, I thought you have a map from G to G prime, but okay. you don't have to quote me because, I mean, I, I, we can check later. I don't think everyone put the question. Uh, oh, he asked me for a binion type, I really need to have a map from uh, G to G prime, or if I just need something on the derived groups. And I said I'm not quite sure right now. And I mean, it's not the main point of the talk, but we, we can check the definition. It's in the lean, except he doesn't call it a billion type. Uh, hmm? What? Sorry. Just derived. Oh, okay. Okay, well then. Let's put the map between square quotes, and now we are good. Uh, right, uh, so here, uh, so I'm going to take G to be the set of uh, G in B cross, such that uh, G G star is of the form C of G times one, with C of G uh, an element of G L one. So this is a group over Q, uh, okay. Uh, and then, so, so 
So like in the case, like in the definition of GSP, I mean, there is a built-in morphism from G uh, to GL1, which is this C. Uh, the kernel I call G0. So uh, the kernel is, uh, an, is actually a restriction, restriction, a very restriction of scalars from F0 to Q of the unitary group over F0 uh, given by this <clears throat> this uh, F, F algebra with this positive involution. Uh, so this, um, <clears throat> these groups uh, that you can get here, they're all inner forms of each other when you vary B. And actually, you have a lot of freedom in how you can choose, uh, how you can choose the B. Uh, and what you get over R, so over R, so, OK, what I mean is they're, they're all classif classified by Galois cohomology of special unitary groups. Uh, so you can find a classification, for example, in papers of uh, Clausel, although um, he's not the one who originally proved it. So um, over R, unitary groups are all Sorry, so inner forms of unitary groups over R, all of the form UPQ. So over R, this is just going to be a product uh, over all real places of F0 of groups of the form UPQ, where P plus Q is, a con is constant. It's N, and what is N? N is square root of the dimension of this uh, central simple algebra. I mean, OK, so if you want uh, the example that we don't want, uh, you can take B to be uh, N by N matrices over F. And you take star to be, uh, well, the usual star transpose of uh, A bar, transpose of G bar, and then you get uh, some unitary group, OK? Uh, so I mean, this is good, because then we know how to define H. So you take H. Uh, I mean, OK, uh, you would probably know better if I had done the example of uh, one of these GUPQs before. So, but there's like a standard way to define an H when you have a, a GUPQ at, a UPQ at infinity is just to take this here. So here I'm assuming. Um, I'm assuming the form has metrics like uh, IPQ00 minus I, uh, IP00 minus IQ in a canonical basis. OK. So that's an example of a PL type Shimura variety uh, of type A. OK, and they all, OK, they all kind of look like that. So in general, you also have an alternating form uh, somewhere. Um, and the uh, involution can be, uh, can be trivial. So for example, if you like another extreme is you take trivial involution, but you take some alternating form, then you get back GSP. Um, OK. Um, great. So ah, what do I want to say? So I said there's a, there's a lot of freedom how you choose this. So if, uh, for example, like if, uh, if n is odd, then uh, we can choose um, this uh, G0, or what well, the unitary group, actually. So let's call this U. So you know that uh, U um, <coughs> over Fv has to be an inner form of, say, the quasi-split unitary group. Uh, and if n is odd, actually, uh, you, uh, OK, that's more complicated. It depends in the, if the place splits or not in f. But, so if, this, if the place does not split, you get a unitary group. If the split, place splits, you get an inner form of GLN. But, and if n is odd, there is no uh, condition to, uh, you, you can choose any any possible inner form at any place, and you'll get a global thing. Uh, if n is even, uh, there is just one parity condition. 
uh, of course, I mean, if n is odd, if n is odd, then at places uh, v that do not split in, in f, uh, there is only one in a form that you can choose. So the, the freedom is a little bit limited that way, but still. But that means, for example, at infinity, you can put whatever you want at infinity and just, if n is even compensate at some other place. Uh, okay. Uh, so this, this example is, uh, uh, has lots of sub-examples. That's my point. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Uh, do you want to say anything else about this right now? Maybe not. Right. Uh, so integral models. Oh, yeah. So we also, I said we also care about, you know, whether the Shimura variety is compact or not. So there is an easy way to make the Shimura variety compact. Uh, just take B to be a division algebra. Okay, so if B is a division algebra. Then this, more varieties are compact. So those are what are called the caught with simple Shimura varieties. So if you know the classification of uh, central simple algebras over, over F, I mean, you can, you can make B, you can ensure that B is a division algebra by uh, choosing the correct inner forms at some places, but the easiest way to do it is just take a place that is split and just take a division, take the inner form there to be a division algebra. And then like you're sure that uh, your group is gonna be an isotropic. Uh, that is not necessary, but certainly sufficient. So again, lots of examples. Um, <clears throat> uh, it has another property that uh, it's a bit more technical, so I, um, I won't, be able to explain the details, but it also has no, it has a very simple twist formula because it doesn't have like, I, I don't want to say it doesn't have endoscopy because it certainly has local endoscopy at some places, but it, it doesn't really have any, it doesn't have any global endoscopy groups, for example. Uh, so unfortunately we didn't get into the, uh, we didn't get into the stabilization of the trace formula yet. So maybe, uh, when Tasho explains it, <coughs> this will make more sense. But, yeah. Hmm? Sorry. Not every Shimura datum can be embedded inside the symplectic group. Well, no, those are the Hodge type ones. And not all of them can. Uh, I mean, first, you can, so you cannot get all types. So E6 and E7, you can't. Uh, and also, there is a, there's problems with the center of G. Uh, so, yeah. So if you, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the Lean, so the Lean has two papers on canonical models and he, he just lists all the conditions uh, so that on G, so that you can embed G into uh, the symplectic group with this Shimura data, datum, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> right, so integral models. Uh, so let's say that you have a nice canonical model here uh, and you want to talk about integral models of that. Uh, so this is a so this is a model on the reflex field. Oh, so the first thing is uh, so canonical models are all defined on the same basis, which is the reflex field. But for integral models, we already saw in the case of Ziegel modular varieties uh, that if you want a nice smooth model, then you can hope. Uh, for all the models to be defined over the ring of integers, you have to throw out some prime numbers. Okay, so which prime numbers to throw out? Uh, so we expect an integral model So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at one localization of uh, OE uh, <clears throat> So P is a, is a prime ideal of, of OE. And uh, 
uh, I'm going to call uh, p to the prime number uh, that, uh, that is above uh, this prime ideal. And uh, so when do you expect to have an integral model? Well, uh, uh, well like nice integral model? Uh, is when this p uh, is, well, when like basically everything is unramified at p. So what that means? Uh, so here you can see uh, when do we have an integral model on zp? Uh, when p does not divide uh, the level. So how do we say p does not divide the level when the level is, uh, is an open compact subgroup? Uh, well, here level L mean, corresponds to this k of n. Uh, so p not dividing n means that k of n, uh, if I look at the factor uh, in g of qp, uh, it's just g of, g of zp. Okay? Uh, so here, what I will ask is that the level factors and to a place at p, I mean, a level at p and a level outside p, so this is like finite adults outside P. And the level at P, so here it was uh, GSP2D of ZP, uh, which is not just um, an open compact subgroup, it's a hyperspecial uh, maximal compact subgroup. So the condition is going to be that the level hyperspecial at P, uh, and of course that implies uh, that G, the group, is unramified over QP. Okay, otherwise there is no hyperspecial uh, maximal compact subgroup. So that is the first point. Uh, only, only under this condition do we expect integral models. The second point is uh, characterization. Uh, so canonical models are characterized by uh, CM points in the Shimura variety. Uh, okay, so for integral models, don't, don't ask me why, but apparently that didn't work. Uh, so I guess if we look at uh, Shimura varieties for Tora, it's not just, it's not as simple as, oh, those are just finite sets, and so I just have to define the action of the Galois group of something. So the way integral models are characterized is by extension properties, like a little bit like neural models. Uh, so, Okay, so what I'm going to call the integral model, I'm going to call it curly M, just like the Ziegel model of variety. Uh, so the characterization we expect is uh, uh, for every S some like nice test scheme, uh, we'll want <coughs> I will want a morphism between generic fibers of S to, to uh, the canonical model to extend to the integral model. And uh, because all the schemes are nice, this will be, uh, un the extension will be unique. Uh, I mean, also certainly we want this also to be smooth over the basis, but that's not enough, okay? Uh, okay, so there was a lot. So this was already, I think, in uh, Milner and Moonen. Uh, the problem was like, what class of nice test schemes do we choose? Uh, and uh, so we want something that is uh, big enough so that this forces the integral model to be unique, but we want, don't want it to be unique, uh, to be too big, otherwise the integral model won't exist. Uh, and also I'm kind of sweeping that under the rug, but we want to uh, modulo this condition on K, we actually want the canonical model to extend as a, as a projective system uh, when the part outside of P here varies. Just like the canonical model. We want, we want all the hacker operators that are trivial at P to also extend to integral models. Okay, uh, well, so uh, then uh, Kissin actually, so he gave So he gave a class of test schemes. And he constructed these integral models. Uh, 
the Navarian type. So, <clears throat> what the what the schemes? Uh, so, so don't ask me why, but apparently uh, the correct condition on S is um, regular formally smooth. And certainly that will that will give uh, uniqueness because uh, that means that you can t you can use for example uh, you can use uh, the integral model itself as a test scheme. Uh, so if you have two integral models, the identity of the generic fiber will extend in both directions. Okay, and uh, just uh, maybe to. Uh, To finish on that, I can I can give you an idea of the construction in a Hodge type. So remember Hodge type, uh, Hodge type is there. Okay. Ooh. Well, so the idea, uh, so if if uh, GH if is Hodge type. So you have your Shimura variety here. And since you're Hodge type, so the Shimura datum embeds into a Ziegel uh, datum. And so there's a, a proposition of Dunin that says you can choose uh, the, the levels. So that this embeds, this uh, gives a, a closed immersion between the Shimura varieties. And in fact, uh, uh, that was one way, uh, using this uh, over C, uh, Delin proved the existence of canonical models for Hodge type Shimura varieties before we had the general theorem. Uh, just by taking the closure of all CM points that factored through this uh, GH thing, basically. Uh, and so now the idea is, uh, well, this is the generic fiber of a canonical model, MK prime. Uh, so here I'm cheating a little bit because I'm pretending that I can choose k prime hyperspecial at p when k is hyperspecial at p, which may be not always true, but uh, okay. So m k prime is defined over z p, uh, so I can certainly base change it to uh, to this ring of integers. And uh, what do I do? I just take uh, m k here to be uh, the closure. Of uh, of this generic fiber in in uh, in the integral model of the Ziegel modular variety, okay, uh, and and then you have to you have to check that this does satisfy uh, the extension property, okay, uh, and now uh, so I have to say um, so until yesterday I thought that you had to normalize the closure, uh, but yesterday UJ told me uh, that. Uh, she proved that the normalization step is not necessary, so the closure, the closure is already normal. So, which is very nice because that means that you actually have a modular, modular description of the integral model uh, in theory. <laughs> um, I don't know how easy it is to use, but okay. Uh, good, good, good. I am, uh, as usual, very late. So now that uh, I confused everybody about integral models, uh, let's talk about the Cotwist conjecture. So the Cotwist conjecture, it's about the cohomology of a Shimura variety. So let's take, again, GH uh, and so I'm going to, I'm just going to restrict to the compact case, uh, but you can ask me about the non-compact case, not much changes. Uh, well, okay. Uh, and so let's look at hi, which is the limit over all levels of uh, hi of the, well, eta hi of the canonical model. Uh, 
uh, base change to uh, E bar. Uh, I'm taking constant coefficients. You can ask me about non-constant, not much changes again. Uh, so this has actions of uh, has an action of G of A F by K cooperators, and it has an action uh, because of this base change here of the absolute Galois group of of E. Yes. Uh, sorry, can you speak louder because with uh, this uh, ACI? I mean. No, 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 arbitrary, arbitrary. Uh, I mean, a, a, a proving it is another matter, but the conjecture is stated in full generality. <laughs> uh, however, the statement I'm going to give is not true in full generality anyway, but uh, okay, that's another problem again. Uh, Cause with conjecture, all the cases we know are abelian type so far. Uh, if I get to the explanation of the proof, you will see why. It involves counting points over finite fields, and we can only, I mean, we need integral models to do that in the first place. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, so here, right. Uh, and, and, and the action of this, uh, we know, uh, well, we have Matsushima's formula describing the action of this. So we know that uh, only, um, uh, irreducible representations of this that extend to automorphic representations of GA will appear in this cohomology. Uh, so let's take a pi f, an irreducible representation of G of AF. And so we can look at the pi f isotypical component uh, in each i. So this is, is a so this is a representation of Galois of E bar over E, and we know its dimension by Matsushima's formula. So it's sum over all pi infinity such that pi f tends to pi infinity is automorphic. Uh, then you take the multiplicity of uh, this automorphic representation, and then you have the dimension of gk of the H i g k of pi infinity. Okay, not important. We're not going to use that. Uh, well, I mean, I don't mean not important. I mean not important right now. But, uh, but the question is, okay, uh, this is very nice, but what is the action of the Galois group here? So cause with conjecture is an answer to that. So maybe I just uh, go ahead and state the conjecture. And uh, because I have a, a distressingly high proportion of experts in the room, uh, yes, the conjecture I'm stating is false. Okay, uh, and I will I will say why is this false. Uh, but so first, uh, so the conjecture is about. Uh, Sorry, hi is individual hi is for the alternating sum. Uh, however, you can recover individual hi. Uh, we'll talk about that. And here, so to be precise, there is a twist, and I think it's that twist. So this is a t twist. Uh, <clears throat> and so this should be equal to, uh, so here, So a sum over all ways to extend pi f to an automorphic rep uh, representation, uh, and then some integer a pi. Uh, well, I won't give the formula unless you really uh, push me. <coughs> and then the class of a Galois representation, and this shouldn't be a c, it's an r. Here, OK. Uh, OK, and the, the brackets just mean, just because I'm taking a virtual representation. So it just means class of this. Uh, so what is this? This is the Langlands parameter. Yeah, if it, if it looks strange, I mean, I, even though I state a conjecture that is false, uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, <coughs> careful about it. Uh, actually, this is only going to depend on pi f, uh, this composition. 
<laughs> so uh, I could have grouped them all together. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this phi pi is the Langlands parameter of pi. So that's uh, uh, the conjectural Langlands parameter. Which uh, I'm taking as a map from the absolute Gauss group of Q to uh, the Langlands group. Uh, QL bar version of the Langlands group. So here it's actually phi pi restricted to the absolute Gauss group of E. Okay. Uh, so we discuss. So we, we, we discussed that I think yesterday. Um, there is some kind of global Langlands conjecture. Automorphic representations should be parameterized by morphisms into uh, the Langlands group. Uh, for the general ones, the morphism should be defined on something that is called the Langlands group of Q. However, the pi that appear here are all uh, algebraic representations, and for those, we expect the parameter to factor through the motivic Galois group of Q, and then by the elliptic realization, we can get a parameter like this. <sighs> Whew. Uh, and what is rho mu? Uh, well, I mean, you'll notice that this phi pi doesn't land in uh, GLN or something. Uh, it, it lands in this, uh, uh, this word uh, pro algebraic group. Okay, so uh, I need a representation of this group. So rho mu is a representation of this group, uh, and it's pretty simple. Uh, well, basically, so you have H. Okay, and from H yesterday, or when we defined the reflex field, we cooked up H mu, uh, no, mu H, uh, the minuscule pro character. which uh, as a conjugacy class defined over E. Well, mu h is a co-character of G, uh, so it corresponds to a character of the dual group. So then mu h gives uh, well, rho mu a representation of the dual group of G with highest weight uh, well, mu h, the dual of mu h, okay? Uh, and then because mu h is defined over E, uh, this actually extends, uh, it extends to, uh, um, to this uh, semi-direct product. So, um, okay. Maybe I'll just give you a couple of examples of this room U. Um, this probably be uh, more enlightening, or, or, or not? Yes. Uh, well, uh, so pi is an automorphic representation. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, so, so I'm uh, asking what the source of if the Langlands, the source of the Langlands parameter is the Gauss group of Q, absolute Gauss group of Q, or absolute Gauss group of E, and. So it is the absolute Gauss group of Q. Pi is a ton, it's a ton, sorry, G is a group over Q, an algebraic group over Q. Pi is a cuspid automorphic representation of this group. It's Langlands, Langlands parameter, uh, and it's algebraic. So it's, it has a Langlands parameter that is defined on the absolute Gauss group of Q. But then E is a finite extension of Q. So this is just a finite index subgroup of the absolute Gauss group of Q. So I'm just restricting the parameter to this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I said that if you really push me, I can give you a formula for it. Uh, I mean, it's not the multiplicity of pi. There's also like the trace of pi infinity on the pseudo coefficient of uh, some discrete series, and there's also a sign. Uh, a pi is, doesn't have to be positive. I mean, it depends on which uh, parity your representation appears. <laughs> so I, 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 yeah. So if, if you want me to write a formula, I will write formula during the Q and A. <laughs> Uh, I absolutely cannot hear you. Uh, I, I want to ask a, a, a question that uh, uh, is the color representation. H I have, uh, if I simply type uh, color representation, it is that uh, semi simple 
so it is. Uh, so the question is: uh, is that uh, Galois representation semi-simple? And the answer is. Uh, Conjecturally, it is, uh, but we don't know how to prove it in general. I think it's known in a very few cases. Uh, so here, I went to the to, to a group of virtual Galois representations. So it's like I, I only uh, it only uh, shows um, the same simplification anyway, because uh, I went to the quaternary group of Galois representations. Uh, so yeah, that's a good question. So, but uh, uh, we. I mean, we certainly expect it to be. Uh, and we certainly don't know how to prove that in general. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, examples. Examples, examples. Should I've kept that? Should I've kept that? Should I've kept that? <laughs> totally should I've kept that. Uh, here, I'll give you the. Very enlightening example of the Ziegel. Uh, OK, so yes, I know I said G is anisotropic. However, the conjecture does extend to non-anisotropic case. And also, the definition of Romeo makes sense in general. So let me tell you what Romeo is for the symplectic group. OK. So GSP2D and H is defined by like so. Uh, OK, uh, well, well what, is the, what is the dual group? Uh, the dual group is a, is a very friendly group that is called G spin 2D plus 1 of C. Uh, I guess it's QL bar. I'm taking the QL bar version. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so what nice representation of that do we have? Uh, the spin representation. So room U is the spin representation. OK, uh, so if d equals 1, uh, if d equals 1, this is GL2, this is GL2, this is the standard representation. If d equals 2, this is GSP4, this is isomorphic to GSP4 by some one of those exceptional isomorphisms. This is the standard representation. And if d is at least 3, you're in trouble. Uh, this is where I stop understanding. OK, uh, <clears throat> I mean. So I, uh, you can write the highest weight of that representation. That's not a problem. Uh, but then you know that when you have the highest weight, uh, you d in theory, you know a lot of things about the representation. In practice, it can be a little bit harder <laughs> to like, calculate the Val character formula and all that. Uh, here's another example. These unitary groups here. Uh, what is? Uh, what is rho mu? I mean, what is mu? Basically, mu is you only keep this, uh, and z bar you send to 1. Uh, so rho mu, oh, well, first, what is g hat? OK, so g hat, you're going to have uh, gl1, uh, which uh, is because g is like uh, some gu group and not u. And then you're going to have a product of a whole tau of uh, some gln. So this is all over QL bar here. OK, uh, so the rho mu is going to decompose the character. Uh, it's, uh, rho mu is irreducible, OK? So it decomposes as a product, that's a product of representations of those. And what is rho mu tau? I mean, uh, so usual sign problem. Uh, so up to a dual, maybe, uh, Tasho, uh, Sagu, don't kill me. But it's, it's basically the p tau exterior power of the standard representation. OK, and then you have the question of, uh, this is just what it is on g hat. Uh, uh, g uh, is going to split over f. So you have to calculate the action of the guy group of f over q on that. Well, uh, maybe not, because uh, the. The reflex field is probably going to be f of f0, depending on the signatures and all that. So I mean, you do have to calculate maybe an action of a Galois group on that uh, if the reflex field is strictly smaller than f, uh, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, well, my point here is, uh, OK, uh, that is, is kind of annoying. Uh, both of these are annoying. I mean, 
Why is it annoying? Because uh, look, the Cortwist conjecture, I mean, for GL2, uh, we really we really had the global Langlands correspondence appearing in the cohomology. Here it says, well, it's the global Langlands correspondence here, except there is this room you kind of messing things up. So what we're really interested in is phi pi, okay? Uh, but we don't get phi pi, we get room you composed with phi pi. Uh, and room you can be, uh, well, so in this case, it's, Romeo is kind of unavoidable because the dual group is this like, it's, it, it doesn't have an obvious embedding into a GLN. But in that case, the dual group is basically a product of GLN. Why couldn't Romeo just be the standard representation or something? Okay, uh, if uh, like it, it can really mess up eigenvalues, for example. Uh, so this is why this is why what I told you that you have a lot of freedom in the choice of the signatures is good. Because, for example, if you're trying to see, if you're trying to build global Langlands from the cohomology of Shimura varieties, what will you do? You will take a signature that is like 0n to some power times 1n minus 1. OK, um, so what do I have time to say now? Good. Because this corresponds to the standard representation. Hmm? Because this corresponds to the standard Yeah, so this will give you the, it will give you the standard representation of one of these factors. So this is why this signature is so popular in like uh, the Harry Steller book, for example, or like Sogwu's papers, or Closer's papers before that, actually. What? You, you use this signature, don't tell me. Okay, so uh, what can I tell you in like a very short time? Um, right. Did I raise, I uh, didn't erase quote this conjecture. So I can, uh, well, since I already started mentioning it, what are possible, ah, right. Uh, so many things to say, so little time. Uh, so I said the conjecture was false. Uh, I mean, there are several problems with the conjecture. Well, first I restrict you to the combat case. This is not really a problem. This can be fixed. Second, uh, the conjecture is too naive. Uh, in general, you have to, um, Okay, so the conjecture is expected to be true on the nose when there is no endoscopy. Uh, so for example, in the case of the caught with simple Shimura varieties, uh, the conjecture is actually known at the ramified places, which I sh will maybe explain in a second what that means. Uh, however, in general, uh, you have to, uh, you actually only get a piece of that representation, rho mu times phi pi. Uh, so you have, a, you, have a, you have a precise recipe that tells you what piece, uh, but that involves this centralizer of phi. Uh, so maybe again, uh, ask me if you really want to know, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. Uh, right, so then what do we say when we say we check code with conjecture? Obviously phi pi is conjectural. Uh, however, what we do know is uh, the global Langlands correspondence should be compatible with the local, the local Langlands correspondences. At unramified places, the local Langlands correspondence is just the Satake isomorphism. So if I look, uh, if I restrict phi pi to a local Galois group at an unramified place, uh, then I know exactly what I should get. It's just given by the Satake parameters of pi. So in that case, I get a very precise conjecture that can be checked and that Cotwist has checked actually in many cases and other people in other cases. Uh, and then at ramified places, it has also been checked, but I don't understand anything about ramified places, so maybe not. Okay, so possible applications. So, uh, so the Cotwist conjecture is relating two things that we don't understand, cohomology of Shimura varieties and global Langlands. So we can use it to understand stuff about the cohomology of Shimura varieties. For example, we can say, oh, well, it tells, you, tells us what the L function of the Shimura variety should be. Uh, and what kind of problem can we attack with that? So we don't know much about L functions of algebraic varieties over Q or over number fields, 
uh, they are supposed to have meromorphic continuations. We're supposed to know the poles. They're supposed to have functional equations and all that. Well, the code with conjecture tells you that the L function of the Shimura variety can be expressed in terms of L functions of automorphic forms. And for L functions of automorphic forms, we do have analytic tools to prove things like a meromorphic continuation. Again, uh, this is in theory, because in practice, uh, you don't get standard L, L functions. You get L functions that are messed up by this rho mu. So uh, it's a bit more complicated. Yes, Erase, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, and the second possible application is uh, constructing cases of global Langlands. But constructing phi, uh, pi for some pi. OK, so you can say, well, uh, I want to construct global Langlands. So uh, I'm going to start with a group that has a Shimura variety, so not GLN. Uh, I'm going to take a pi, and I'm going to look at the pi f isotypical part. Uh, and also, I should choose an h so that Romeo is a standard representation. That would be nice. And also, I want a pi to be equal to 1. That would be nice, too. Uh, so <laughs> that means that you choose a yes. Ah. Uh, yes, yes. And also, you have that restriction to the reflex field. OK, so you have a bunch of problems. Uh, so uh, you can address all the problems, uh, almost all the problems. Uh, you have a problem also that pi has to be cohomological. So that problem, you cannot attack with these techniques. There are other techniques to attack it, uh, which is like uh, uh, Congress's modular powers of p. But that's, uh, OK, that's like much more recent. Uh, so, uh, so the problem that pi is a representation of a unitary group, well, you have a way to go between unit representations of unitary groups and GLN by via uh, twisted endoscopy. So you could start from a representation of GLN and try to descend it to a unitary group that will only work for some representations. Uh, oh, yes. Did I say that you can get rid of cohomological by uh, congruences? I meant you can get rid of uh, the self-dual condition by congruences. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, so some representations of GLN will come from representations of unitary group, basically the self-dual ones. Uh, and then uh, you choose. You can. You have some freedom in the choice of the unitary group. Again, lots of technical problems, especially when n is even, uh, as we all know. Don't be so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, so you choose the unitary group wisely to have the right signature at infinity. Uh, also, you have to be able to calculate the API. Uh, and then you only get something over some CM extension, maybe. Uh, but then maybe you can vary the CM extension and glue the various representations that you got. Uh, so yes, Yanis, there is a, I mean, you, it's basically you vary the, you vary the F. Uh, so this is like a like super, super long story. Uh, so I think the, I'm just going to say, so the first, the first guy who, the guy who started that story is Clausel. Uh, so Kortwitz, uh, Kortwitz proved his conjecture at a ramified place for simple Shimura varieties, and then Clausel used it to construct some cases of global Langlands. So Clausel building on Kortwitz. Uh, and he already had uh, all these problems. Uh, but he, he dealt about it by just having lots of conditions in his theorems. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I was. So. So I don't have. I don't have much time. I have a negative time to tell you how to prove it, although I think I did start, start a little bit late. So maybe I have zero minutes, like not minus two minutes. But, um, so how, to, so how do you attack that? Uh, so this basically, uh, OK. Uh, so you want to understand cohomology of humor varieties. So the first thing you do is uh, so you have the Shimura variety here. And you say that etal cohomology of the Shimura variety e over E bar 
is isomorphic to etal cohomology of its integral model reduced uh, over the algebraic closure of the residue field, and this is for the action of the local Galois group. Plus Hecker correspondence outside P. Okay, so this requires you to have an integral model, uh, a nice enough integral model. Uh, Specialized, I mean, here, uh, this is uh, projective. I'm supposing this projective, so I just need smooth projective integral model. Okay, the second part is uh, calculating this cohomology, so this is the fixed point formula. Okay, so left shift fixed point formula. Uh, so, okay, so many people contributed to that. Um, so, left shift fixed point formula, I mean, basically, we only, we only look at the semi-simplification of the cohomology, so it's going to be like calculating the trace of some operators on the cohomology. Uh, I should say Grothendieck left shift fixed point formula tells you how to do that in a cohomology. Uh, to really make it work, you need, uh, you need uh, some precise description of the fixed uh, of the local terms in that formula that is given by the Lin's conjecture that was proved by Fuji, well, in that case, Pink Fujiwara Varshevsky independently. So, uh, triply, triply proof conjecture. Uh, and then you need, once you reduce to a problem of counting points that are fixed under some, uh, some morphisms, you need to actually be able to count the points. So, there is a formula, there is a conjecture called the Langlands Rapoport conjecture. Uh, that gives you a very precise description of uh, points of a finite field uh, that was proved by Kissin in abelian type uh, and by Kortwitz in PL type. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and then you get something that actually, uh, well, uh, I can't write down, but it's good that. Uh, has a bunch of like integral orbitals, twisted um, orbital integrals, twisted orbital integrals, blah, blah, blah. And you want something that looks more like trace of photomorphic representations on some operators. So the last uh, step is the trace formula. Uh, and here in the middle, there is a little bit of stabilization. So fundamental lemma too. Uh, uh, and then you, by basically the result pops out after only like 12 papers. Um, <clears throat> so in the symbol Shimura variety case, this stabilization term, uh, well, this stabilization step is, is relatively easy. It only involves the base change fundamental lemma, which was known. In the general case, you need the full fundamental lemma. Uh, and it's quite painful. Actually, stabilization, uh, Wait, so there is a recent, as in last fall, book of, uh, wait, so it's Yi Hangzhou, uh, Yu, right? And Mark Kissin, where they do the st stabilization of uh, the result of this uh, Langlands Rapoport thing in the opinion case, in all generality, even if GDR is not simply connected. Um, so, yeah, maybe I can stop here. <laughs>